Hello and welcome to my channel. Today we will weave a rectangular basket. All the information about how to prepare the paper for weaving a basket is in the description to this video. There are many different ways to weave a rectangular or a square base for a basket. We will start from the basic method. I recommend using a mold for weaving a rectangular or a square basket. This time I will use a mold I made from Lego bricks. Its size is 23.5 by 11.6 cm. Let's make a drawing for the rectangular base. I will make it on a sheet of paper for illustration purposes, but you can make it directly on the cardboard, which will be used for weaving the base. Start from drawing a rectangular shape corresponding to the size of your mold. It's 23.5 by 11.6 cm for my basket. After making an adjustment for the thickness of the basket walls, which is approximately 4 or 5 mm, we get the slightly larger dimensions of the basket base. I add 4 mm on all four sides of the rectangular I have just drawn. I will draw it in red, again for illustration purposes. So I got the actual size of the future basket, which is 12.4 by 24.3 cm. I recommend using the double stakes for weaving a rectangular or a square base because it's easier to keep them straight. The stakes should be equally spaced. The optimal space between them is 1.5-2 cm. I calculated the number of stakes I need by dividing the length and the width of my basket by 2 and got approximately 12 and 6 stakes. Round up the distance between the stakes if necessary. Plot six segments approximately 2 cm each along the width of the rectangular corresponding to the actual size of the base. It's the red rectangular on my drawing. Do it on the other side of the rectangular as well. Connect the dots with parallel lines. Now plot 12 segments approximately 2 cm each along the length of the rectangular. Draw the parallel lines. I will cut the drawing out along the lines marking the size of the mold, that is, along the black lines, and will make the same drawing on the cupboard, leaving extra 5 or 6 cm on one side and 3 or 4 cm on the other side. As I have mentioned earlier, you can make this drawing directly on the cupboard. I made it on the sheet of paper only as an illustration. I have prepared everything I need for weaving a rectangular base. The stakes are dry, the weavers are properly moisturized and cured. All the paper rods have been treated with the acrylic varnish and water as usual. Please find the links to the tutorials where I explain all these steps in the description to this video. The length of my rods is 27 centimeters. Technically speaking, they are long enough to cover the whole base. However, their length is not enough to turn them up vertically after I finish weaving the base. I need to elongate them. I cut one rod in half at a right angle and connect each half to a full length rod this way. I made a diagram to show how to connect the rods. I need to prepare 7 pairs of the elongated stakes, that is 14 elongated rods altogether. Attach all 7 pairs of the elongated stakes to the cupboard where you left extra 5 or 6 cm. Use the binder clips or the clothes pins. Take one weaver. The weavers have to be properly prepared and should be flexible and start weaving the pattern called the ordinary rending. That is when the weaver goes under one stake and over the next stake, then again under the stake and over the following stake and so on. Put the weaver under the first stake and over the second stake. Make sure it stays along the line you marked on the drawing. Make a kink with your nail at the place where the next stake will be located and place the weaver under the third stake, over the fourth and under the fifth. 
Make a kink every time before placing a weaver under the stake. Over the sixth, under the seventh, and out. Take the second weaver and place it over the first and under the second stake. Over, under, and over. When you need to connect the weavers, make sure the connection is located behind the stakes on the wrong side of the weave. Look carefully at this picture. I show where exactly to cut the weaver. Connect the weavers as usual. Cut a little corner off at the butt end of one weaver. Put a drop of glue into it. Flatten the cut end of the other weaver by pressing between your fingers. Make a kink with your nail in the middle, fold it and insert it into the new weaver as far as it goes. Rotate a newly connected weaver a little bit to secure the connection. The junction between two weavers will go under the stakes and will not be seen on the right side of the weave. Check the weave very frequently to make sure the stakes are in the right place. The weaver goes over the seventh stake. Then we need to turn it around and place it under the seventh stake. Before doing it, fold it behind the cupboard like that, and only after that place it under the stake. By doing it, you will shape the weaver properly and it will not be wrapped around the outer stakes too tightly. It's very important because when you weave a rectangular or a square base, the stakes, especially the outer stakes, tend to bend towards the center if the weavers are wrapped up around them too tightly. Continue weaving the ordinary renting. Wrap the left outer stake around, but not too tightly. Elongate the weavers as needed, always placing the connection behind the stakes, as I have shown a bit earlier. We approach the line marking the location of the lateral stake. These are the lateral stakes and these are the longitudinal stakes. Here we have the stake on the left side of the weave. Now we need to add a stake on the right side of the weave. Take a weaver with its butt end pointed outside and place it under the second stake from the right, leaving about 10 cm of the weaver out. Continue the ordinary rending, elongating the weavers as needed. As you see, we need to have one stake on the left end and one stake on the right end of each lateral line on the drawing.
I have reached the next line on the drawing, designating the lateral stakes, and formed a stake on the right side. I put the plastic straws on the stakes because I will need them to be flexible when it's time to turn them up vertically. Now we need to form a stake on the left side. Take a new weaver with its butt end turned to the outside. Leave about 10 cm out of the base to be used as a lateral stake later on and start weaving. Now we have two more lateral stakes, one on the left and another on the right side of the weave. Continue weaving in the same manner up until you finish weaving the base. Pay very close attention to the layout of the stakes, making sure they are strictly parallel to the lines of the drawing and to each other. I have finished weaving the base. I am weaving a basket with the square corners. That's why I need to cut several extra stakes off. Skip this step if you are going to weave a rectangular or a square basket with the rounded corners. So I need to trim the following stakes. I use a shear cutter. The next step is making one round of the pairing weave. Take two weavers and connect them butt to butt. Fold the connected weavers in half and flip the weave over. Place the folded weavers around the stake or a pair of stakes in my case and start the row of the pair in the weave. I showed how to make a pair and weave in several other videos. A link to one of them is at the right top corner of this screen. Pay close attention to the corners of your base. I have mentioned earlier that I am weaving the base for a basket with the square corners. The base for a basket with the rounded corners is made in a slightly different manner. I will show you how to weave it in one of my following videos. So let's have a look how to weave the corners. At the first corner, I have only one stake that goes along the length of the base. 
Bend it at 45 degrees to the weave. Take the weaver, which is supposed to be over this stake, wrap it around the stake and place it under the next stake. Place the second weaver under the corner stake and over the next stake. This extra wrap will help us form the right angle at the corner. Continue the pair and weave up until you reach the next corner. Connect the rods as needed. We have reached the second corner. At this corner we have two stakes, one longitudinal and one lateral. Place these two stakes together at 45 degrees to the weave and make an extra wrap in the same manner as you have just done it at the previous corner. Continue the pair and weave. At the third corner, we have three stakes. Weave around all three of them in the same way you have just done it at the previous corner. At the last fourth corner, we have two stakes. Weave around them together the way you did it at the second corner.
we have reached the place where we started the pair and weave. If we were to continue the pair and weave, we would have placed the weavers this way. Instead, place them this way, which is the step up to the next row. The rectangular basket base is ready. Now you can turn the stakes up vertically to be able to weave the walls of the basket. I have turned the lateral stakes up vertically and secured them in place with an elastic band. There was no need to moisturize them because the plastic straws have kept the moisture in. I will moisturize the longitudinal stakes using the warm water and a syringe. I show this method several times in my other videos. Moisturize all the dry stakes in the same manner. After you inject a sufficient amount of water in a stake, it will become warm to touch and flexible like a weaver. I have set everything up on a waste twisting disc. If you are using the Lego bricks or some other light weighted mold or box, put something heavy on top of it to have a better control of the weaving process. I usually weave two or three rounds of the three rod twine after turning the stakes up. I have two weavers left after finishing a round of the two rod twine, so I add one more weaver this way and start weaving the three rod twine by taking the leftmost weaver, placing it over two stakes behind the third one and out. Make sure the corner stake or stakes are kept strictly at the corner. Have a look at this picture. Here you can see very clearly the correct place for connecting the weavers so that it was not visible at the front of the basket. And here. Weave around each pair of the longitudinal stakes.
We have reached the first stake. Take the rightmost weaver, place it over two pairs of stakes, behind the third one and out. Take the middle weaver and place it over two pairs of stakes, behind the third one and out. Repeat this step with the leftmost weaver. We have stepped up to the next row, which will also be a round of the three rod twine. Continue weaving and pay very close attention to the corner stakes, keeping them strictly at the corner. Press the weave against the mold, keeping the stakes vertical as much as possible. We have reached the first stake again. Step up to the next row in the same manner as the previous three rod row. Put the plastic straws on the weavers to keep the moisture in. Cut all the stakes off using the shear cutter and replace them with the new double stakes. The basket I am weaving is going to be small. That's why I am cutting the paper rods in half at an acute angle. Make some space next to the old stake, put a drop of glue on the cut end of the paper rod and insert it into the weave. Insert the second rod next to the first one. I am going to weave the basket with the ordinary ranting. That's why I insert the double stakes in. It's easier to keep the double or triple stakes vertical in the ordinary ranting as compared to the single stakes. Insert the double stakes all the way around the basket except for the corners. We will need to insert the triple stakes at each corner to ensure the corners are rigid. Here is how to do it. As usual, make some space with a knitting needle and insert the first stake as close to the corner as possible. This stake should lean against one side of the mold. Insert the second stake in a similar manner, but make sure it leans against the other side of the mold. Insert the third stake in front of the newly added stakes so that all three stakes formed a triangle. Secure this triangle in place using a piece of scotch or masking tape. Insert the triple stakes at the remaining corners in the same manner. Weave one more round of the three rod twine. Continue paying close attention to the corner stakes every time you reach the corner. Keep the triangle we have made from the stakes strictly vertical and exactly at the corner of the mold.
we are at the first pair of stakes again. I will weave the remaining part of the basket up until the border with the ordinary rending. If the number of stakes you have is even, you will need to use two weavers chasing each other. I was using three weavers for the three rod twine, so I need to remove the extra weaver. Take the rightmost weaver, place it over two pairs of stakes behind the third one and under two already woven paper rods. I show where to place it with a knitting needle. I pull the weaver through using the long nose pliers. Finish weaving the three rod twine. I will cut the leftover weaver a little bit later. To start weaving the ordinary ending, take the right weaver and place it over one pair of stakes, behind the other pair of stakes and out to the front. Continue weaving in the same manner, one over and one behind. Connect the weavers behind the stakes in the same way we were doing it when weaving the base. Keep all the stakes strictly vertical. Make a kink with your nail at the place where the stake will be touching the weaver. Sometimes, when you place a weaver behind the stake, you will see the weaver getting wrinkled, right here. If you leave it as is, the basket will not look nice and tidy. This problem can be fixed very easily. Just put your finger behind the stakes and press on the wrinkled part of the weaver, pushing it towards yourself, like that. The wrinkle disappears. Continue weaving up until you reach the second weaver, which was left behind. Cut the leftover piece of the weaver using the shear cutter. Take the other weaver that was originally left behind and use it for making the ordinary rending. Now the two weavers are as if chasing each other. Continue weaving in this manner up until you reach the desired height of the basket. I have reached the desired height of the basket and weaving the last row. As you see, the height of the basket is not the same all around it. If it happens to your basket, the solution is simple. 
Weave the very last row at the same height all around the basket, even if it results in having such gaps in the weave. Then, using the knitting needle, spread the rows evenly throughout the whole height of the basket. I don't need this weaver any longer because I almost finished the ordinary rend and so I poke it into the weave. I cut and poke the second weaver into the weave as well. Take the mold out and check the height of the basket on all four sides. Adjust it as needed. Cut all the stakes off using the shear cutter. Now we will make a decorative border. Take one weaver and press it between your fingers to make it flat. Cut approximately 3 cm off at its butt end. Using a needle needle, make some space behind the right stake in any pair of stakes, for example here. Apply some glue to the weaver and insert it behind the right stake. Take two more weavers, put them on top of the basket and use a clothes pin to hold them in place. Now start wrapping them around. When you reach the next pair of stakes, cut the weaver off, leaving a piece approximately 2 cm long, which we will need to poke behind the left stake in the pair of stakes. Make some room behind the left stake with a neat needle, drop a little bit of glue and poke the weaver in. Take another weaver, make it flat by pressing between your fingers, cut about 3 cm off at the butt's end, apply some glue and insert it behind the right stake in the same pair of stakes. Wrap the pair of weavers in the same manner, make sure everything is tight. Continue weaving in the same manner all around the basket. This type of decorative border is very soft and flexible. It's like working with the clay. Shape it to your liking. When you need to connect the weavers, do it as usual. For the last section of the border, simply cut the weavers you used as a base and finish wrapping them up.
the basket is almost ready. The last thing to do is prime it with a mixture of the acrylic varnish and water. Please follow the link in the top right corner to see how to do it. The basket is ready.